Welcome back to our series on real-world considerations in engineering design. In this session, we will introduce issues associated with the environmental consequences of engineering design. The ways in which we, as engineers, impact the environment are far-ranging and often very serious, ranging from the cradle, where natural resources are first extracted from the earth, to disposal, where designs are returned in some way, shape, or form to the environment. Most of these impacts are not yet regulated in a way that forces us to minimize harm to the environment. However, understanding different impacts and the resources available to minimize them can help engineers, even at the design phase, to reduce harm done to both ecosystem and public health over short and long-term timescales. At first glance, the organization that oversees accreditation and quality of engineering programs in the United States, ABET, does not seem to address these environmental consequences. But another look at Outcome C for engineering undergraduate students shows us that engineering students should indeed be exposed to environmental consequences of their profession through the issue of sustainability. A significant part of sustainable engineering design involves reducing impacts and consequences of technology to the environment. And it is this high profile pillar of sustainability that we address in this introduction and subsequent sessions on environmental consequences. Thus far in taking a look at the relationship between environment and engineering design, we've looked at environmental constraints those that mandate we consider these constraints in the design, whether that means a range of operating temperatures or an air emission regulation, environmental constraints demand our attention during design. But environmental consequences are very different. These are the impacts or ways in which our designs and eventual products may hurt the environment but we are not necessarily obligated to prevent these consequences. There are typically more consequences than constraints when it comes to environment, and for that reason, this topic will be divided into multiple sessions to address each in turn, beginning with the cradle where natural resources are extracted to make engineered products, and going all the way to the grave where engineered products return to the environment upon disposal. Most engineering designs that involve a tangible piece of technology begin their long journey of environmental impacts and consequences at the cradle, where natural resources are extracted or otherwise retrieved from the earth as raw materials. In some cases, the technologies and practices used to recover materials are polluting in and of themselves, as is the case with gold and other mining operations. In other cases where raw material is precious or rare and located in a region in the world that is politically unstable, increasing demand for extraction of these materials can often result in conflicts, often violent ones, and corresponding human rights violations, including but not limited to illegal use of child labor. Once raw materials are extracted and distributed, they reach the point of manufacture where an engineering design begins the process of turning raw materials into a finished product. In semiconductor fabrication in particular, the consumption of water per square centimeter of electronic substrate is incredibly high, and water consumption rates can be prohibitive in areas where water is in small supply, such as in the deserts of Arizona, where multiple semiconductor fabrication facilities are located. In the process of using water, water is also contaminated and if inadequately treated and disposed of leads to long-term pollution of underground water tables. Many manufacturing processes ranging from the production of plastics to the production of electronics also result in significant harm to air quality, some of which is regulated and constrained and some of which is not. Once manufactured products stemming from engineering design are distributed, often multiple times until they reach the consumer. The process of distributing and the transportation costs involved 
are a major source of fossil fuel consumption and result in greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution. Products also have environmental consequences once in the hands of consumers or customers. Some, like cars and gasoline-powered tools, pollute the air directly and generate greenhouse gases. Other products, such as the many electronics that waste power, pollute air and water indirectly by using more electricity than need be, or more batteries than need be, which subsequently leads to often unseen environmental consequences. Finally, once a product reaches the end of its useful life, some or all of it re-enters the environment through the waste stream. The impacts of technology waste are tremendous, and this waste impacts everything from air to water to soil, and the crops that grow near waste streams, as well as ecosystems and biodiversity that suffers near poorly regulated recycling facilities. From the engineer's perspective, what is important regarding these environmental consequences is how to minimize or even eliminate them at the point of design and beyond. In the sessions that follow, we will look at some examples of environmental consequences at several stages of a product life cycle and look at some actionable strategies engineers can realistically take to minimize environmental consequences. In this series, we will specifically cast the spotlight on electronics components, devices, and appliances of all kinds. At the natural resource extraction stage, we'll look at gold, a high-profile conflict mineral that can and should be sourced from conflict-free areas in the world to avoid the harm to quality of life that mining conflicts often produce. At the point of manufacture, we will look at semiconductor fabrication and its disproportionate impacts on both water usage and water pollution. We'll also look at means to reduce water usage, particularly in geographical areas whose water supply is low to begin with. At the point of distribution, we will look at typical costs for packaging and transporting electronics, often over long distances and the environmental costs incurred in such transport and distribution. At the point of use in the customer's hands, we'll take a look at the impact of consumer electronics on wasted power consumption, a growing problem in developed and developing countries alike. Reduction in power consumption and waste is very much in the hands of the engineer, from the design phase on forward to product manufacture. Finally, we'll take a brief look at electronic waste and the disproportionate toxicity that this component in the waste stream takes with it to the landfill, to the illegal dump site, to the backyard recycling facility, and more. Much progress has been made in designing for the dump or for recycling, and like power consumption, the engineer has a strong voice in how much impact electronics now have at the grave of their life cycle. Keeping the many possible environmental consequences as well as environmental constraints in mind during engineering design can lead to more sustainable and ultimately more profitable technology over the long term. The wide range of environmental consequences is a course or two in itself, but we'll take a look at just a few examples of these impacts in the spirit of practically reducing these impacts as engineers involved in design and product development. Thank you for joining us today. This concludes our introduction to real-world considerations of environmental consequences in engineering design. We certainly hope that this introduction has invited you to look in more detail at environmental consequences from cradle to grave, and that you'll join us again as we look at examples of environmental consequences in this series on real-world considerations.